today. What's going on? G Franco was goody. Pete, what it do? Y'all seen that Canelo uh, press conference? Two million dollars. Two million dollars. Damn, that's a hefty price. That's a hefty price to pay. <laughs> that's a hefty price. Shout out to everybody, man. Salute to everybody on the live as well. Salute, salute. Yeah, we about to get into this right now. We about to really get into this, man. We got to really cook. We really got to cook, man. <clears throat> then we got this Fundora and Tim Zhu. Real talk. What's going on, Ring Walk? Let's get the Ring Walk in here. Ring Walk Danny. What's goody? What's up, man? How, you, how we doing? I'm good. How y'all sound? Everything good? You sound good. You sound good. So where you at? Where you at, man? You in Vegas? Yeah, you know we at Top Rank, Jim. Hey. Another day in the office. I like it. I like it. Listen, man. Um, box the boxing world's been shaking. Obviously, the Tim Zoo. What you think about the, that whole situation? I know you wasn't even in the, like you wasn't you wasn't there, but like, talk to me as far as far as like you know, the studio is concerned. You talking about Thurman pulling out? Yeah. Oh, man, you know, it was unfortunate. I was looking at cashing some tickets. Mm-hmm. Big facts. Now, you know, Tim Zoo. Yeah, Tim Zoo's, uh, Tim Zoo's been sharp. I've been uh, fortunate to see him in camp. Maybe the last three or four camps he's been in Vegas for. Uh, I've gotten him sparring for some of those camps. Um... Yo, dog work, bro. That guy, that guy is gonna be something special, and I thought he was gonna get the opportunity to show at March thirtieth. So that being said, you don't you don't give him a chance. You got Fondoro in this one? No, I do give him a chance. Obviously, I got him stopping Fondoro. If I'm being honest, but the thing is that Thurman, being the accomplished world champion he is, I just felt that Zoo would have got. The flowers that maybe he wasn't getting, you know, I'm sure there was still some doubters, some people that weren't convinced. So you you believe that, you know, all the questions won't be answered just by beating a guy like Fondora? No, I mean, uh, I mean, he just got stopped, you feel me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you just get stopped by Brian Mendoza and, uh, Tim Zhu obviously went to distance for Brian, but I thought he beat him pretty convincingly. I agree. What do you think about the whole situation with, like, now this is, like, two title title fights now? Mendoza's uh, in the, on the card as well? Look, I don't know that the vacant should be on the line. I know that a lot of people don't want the division held up. I think that uh, it shows... That it's a more competitive fight. There's a reason that Keith wasn't being sanctioned by the bodies, and uh, I'm not even saying it's his fault, but obviously, in activities, a killer. Right. Right. Um, what you think for for one time, man? You think that people are gonna even want to tune into his next fight if he? Do you think he can come back from this? I mean, is he going to wait another two years? Is is that how long uh, a bicep injury will take? No, I mean, I don't know how long it'll take. I know that after Danny fought him, and he had the, the arm injury, he was out for a while. Uh, and, you know, it seems like he fights, you know, like every time we get the Olympics or some shit like that. <laughs> so three to four years, you know. Right, right. Um, so what you think? Are you going to be pulling up to this card? I'm sure, right? It's a good question. Um, and the only reason I say it's a good question, I absolutely would, but there, there might be a prior engagement uh, that we might be covering at a local show in Texas. So that's still up in the air. But if not, I'll look to be there next weekend. Mm, mm. Um, what you think about that? That uh, the co-main? 
Well, even before that, right? How you th- how you think Crawford fits in all this? Think uh, he fits in great, right? I think I was one of those people I felt at least public publicly in the media that was pushing for that fight. You know, I'm from Chicago. We got a thing out there called Harold's Chicken, and uh, we have one here in Vegas. And I took Bo Mac and Coach Red to some Harold's, and I was like down under and this and that. I don't think it happens down under, but it's a fight I'd love to see nonetheless. Right, right. Um, obviously, you know, the co-main event. I mean, so you, you favor Crawford in the fight. Over oh, who's who? Uh, Fandora winning? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh, He's stopping both, though? Oh, that, that man is different. You think he's stopping both? I think he can. I think I think it'd be a bit premature for me to say, given that uh, we ain't never seen him at the weight. But uh, I him uh, for Martinez. He's undefeated. Uh, maybe like twelve and zero at this point, or something along those yeah. lines. And have a glass one, brother. Killer, bro, and I. Storm, and I think Bud can hold his own against just about anybody from fifty four, sixty, and sixty eight. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Does it send the message? You think? I the I don't I don't think this puts him in the in the Canelo radar. The message, but I think that uh, it only puts him in that little attention. You're still uh, a the division. You're you're gonna uh, you know, given that he wins and everything, he would be a unified champion in another division. So I think that it puts him in a great place, nonetheless. And it's in his head, he wants that Canelo fight moving up in the weight. Uh, helps him prepare for that. It does. Do you think it's because, like, you know, you got to take your time moving up in weight? You know, I think Roy Jones said that, right? He said you should take your time moving up in weight classes. I think, uh, I think, uh, I think Bud could do things other people can't. Um, what's up, coach? Everything is good. Um, I think he's a hell of an athlete, bro. Like, like, forget. And Roy was too, you know, I know he would play basketball and shit like that. But, like, I think Bud is, like, a hell of an athlete when you talk about boxers. I've seen him hold with Des Bryant, get busy on the court. Um, and that man's on the court for hours. Like, ain't no taking him off. Like, he was running their ass off the court back to back. He's he's another he's another animal. Um I think I seen I think I seen Gilly get him though. I think I seen Gilly get him. Nah. You know, um, I saw clips today video. I don't remember the full video if I'm being honest with you. I did see clips, but uh, but like, what was it? Was it after y'all didn't rent? Because it seemed like they did the one on one after doing team games. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, okay. It, it is a team sport. Let's not forget it. It is a team sport. Yeah, he goes, he goes, how many sparring partners did he go through before you sparred him? <laughs> I, hey, 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 look, I feel like that matters, right? Is he bringing in a good work on the back of the Nah, fight? it's true, it's true, it's true. It's true. We're going to 21 or we're going, we going to 12, right? Um, nevertheless, we had that, that Canelo Alvarez press conference, and he said a couple things that kind of was an eye opener for the people. Um, in your eyes, were you able to see the press conference or were you busy? I saw clips, I didn't watch it in its entirety, but uh, I am sure you, I'm sure you go into where what everybody been talking about the 150 200 yep. million US dollars not to be confused with Mexican <laughs> masters. I know I know some of my, oh, some of my body in that and I'm like 
That's true. Now. You know, uh, yeah, I, I didn't see it in this entirety. I saw that, though. Um, no, he could have just said he don't want to fight. He could have told us, look, I got knee problems. I'm older. You feel me? I can't fuck the same. Like, he could have really gave us anything but the 150 to 200 million. Um, I don't even find it realistic. You know, I was saying it earlier. It's such a huge gap. Such a huge gap. Uh, you know, if, if that was a serious number, I think he would have aimed and not said it publicly. Three, and three or four times as much as what he's ever gotten paid, right? Guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. guaranteed. You know, I, I haven't checked the I haven't checked the market value of what DMC is going for. It isn't that much higher. You get what I'm saying? So 150 million is absurd. It is. So what do you think he gets from that? Like oh, and then you can't forget the only thing he gets from the only thing that that what what was he saying? That only thing that he loses uh, or he, gains he is twenty five pounds. Twenty five pounds, right? End of the fight. I mean, uh, seems like since December, uh, fight night weights have been a big topic of conversation, right? Uh, but they, they want to talk about what Benavidez does and doesn't bring to the table. But who the fuck is he fighting that brings anything to the table? Hmm. Hmm. Like, like, like. Is Jaime Munguia walking through Tijuana, where he's from, and being stopped and being? Because I know I know Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno walks through TJ, he get a stop and mob. So it's like, what pay per view numbers they bring in? Mm. So you don't think you don't, you don't think it's not going to be a you don't think it's a bigger fight on Cinco on Cinco de Mayo. Does it do? Does it do? Does it do similar numbers on that specific date? No. As a Mexican, no, uh, tell us. No, like, no. I think that as a Mexican, the people want to see him fight David. Okay. I think that's just the fight that the people want to see. I don't think it's about a Jaime or a David thing as much as it is the Mexican people want to see their guy fight the best guy available. Mm. This case it just so happens to be a you know Mexican so door like whatever you want to twist is like bro the, the, the kid is a bad motherfucker his last name is Benavides you know the the, the team is, is Mexican you know I've I've done an entire camp with them I've been around them uh you know, throughout multiple states, throughout multiple camps, throughout many, many years, like you know, it's, it's only the it's only the corner people that bring that shit up, and 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 uh, we all know David's the best available guy on the site. Mm. So, I mean, as far as this fight, what what are the chances? I mean, I've I've interviewed a few people. I think Breadman says it has potential fight of the year. I mean, uh, what, what, what would you think about that? You know, and if that is if that is the case, I mean, isn't isn't that moving smarter? Uh, Especially if he's going to give it to us I mean, eventually. I think I think it's a risk and reward, uh, and I mean that's a big if. I mean, can you can you see him get one hundred and fifty to two hundred guarantee? Nah. I can't see that fight being that big. I, and, and, and when we talk about some of the biggest fights in the sport, most of the money is made on the back. Yeah, most of the money is made from pay-per-views and from, you know, good uh, gates and stuff like that. I don't know that we'll ever get that fight. Um, I do believe that the Munguia fight provides a lot of entertainment. It provides a, uh, a, a, a risk of threat, which is why... People, what's up, Chad? How you doing? What's up? Good guy. I uh, appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I heard it here first. Well, Blair Cobb said the Adrian Broman fight is done. Finally, finally, I'm gonna hit up Blair after this. Great. I missed it. I had, I had the Don King fit on the other day. He so this was Don, right? This was Don. Yeah, yeah. He signed up Don and uh. That was Blair walking out the gym. He said, he said, it's a done deal. Him and Adrian Broner and Blair.
Talk about the press conference on that joint. <laughs> That promotion, huh? Let's just hope that Don Stream doesn't drop. Yo, shit, Max. Yo, yo, great, great fight. Um, uh, Blair was excited. He hasn't fought in a long time. Yeah, he hasn't fought in a long time. I know he, he had been wanting to get out of that older boy deal for a while. Uh, obviously, it took some time, and he was able to do it, and now it takes some more. Time to get a fight in a promotional deal. Who the fuck would have thought people were still signing the Don King in 2024? But uh, as long as he gets in the ring, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell of a promotion. Hell of a promotion. How about the fight? I'm paying for Bronis to win. Mm. I think uh, Blair provides uh, some threat. But uh, I think if we see shades of, of an old boner, you know, this, just a shell of himself, I think I think he pulls it up. Mm. Mm. A.B. A.B. coming back with Blair Cobbs. That's a great comeback fight for both guys. You know what I mean? Definitely. Because I think A.B. was coming from what? George Hutchinson? Last year? Yeah, and then and then before that, that it was like who? Then he fought a guy on Showtime after Pacquiao in the bubble, couldn't get him out of there. So it was like, you know, I think it's gonna be a good entertaining fight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um damn. So you give Jaime Mungia any chance in this fight with Canelo? I think, uh, you know, probably like a 75, 25, 70, 30. I was talking, uh... Look, I think, I think, I think, see that Canelo and his team give him a shot. You don't, you don't get a rematch on a draw. Like, you know, they got a rematch clause in case it's a draw or they lose. So I think they know to... There's a threat there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's, there is a threat. Yo, so, you know, you know what fight I'm liking? Estrada and, and Bam. What you think about that fight? Bam, belt to ass. He, he stops him? Uh, it's bad. You know, uh, if he don't, you know, he just out school him. You know, I, guy, guy is a tough SOB, but, uh, you know, Bam is one of the most talented fighters in the sport right now. Right. Future pound for pound, right? No doubt about So I don't, see, I don't see many guys right now fucking with him. Right. Right. Now, um, obviously, you know, there's the big Cepeda win last week. Obviously put him in, in contention to... You know, really, the WBA and the IBF. Um, you know, how do you think he does uh, from the winner of Cambosis and uh, Loma? What you think, Loma take him? I think. You think you think Loma take Cambosis? Huh? That's not a serious question. I mean, I've I I actually have had already. Coach Kenny say, Coach Kenny say that uh, Cambosis beats him. Uh, you know, Coach Breadman say that it's a 50-50 fight, but he does he does believe that you know Loma will win. Some other people think you know hey, it's a closer fight. Bill, if you got any, if you got any, uh, anybody who got George, that's a better man because you know most of those guys, you know, they're gonna say it's against you know what they believe in or their ethics. If you if you know anybody who is unethical, who who has a gambling problem, and is taking George, call me. Right, right. <laughs> now, now look, uh, George would be lucky to see the final bell in that fight. He'll lucky. He's lucky. Yeah, I think I think he has so much heart, but I I think he's lucky if he sees the final bell in that fight. You know, uh, some people bringing up his. His, his old sparring with Pal and how that'll help him. And yeah, 
I got I got Loma. I got Loma and ten. You got Loma and ten. Hmm. Now that being said, uh think Loma and Williams is a hell of a fight. A winnable fight for Williams. But say to assume, yeah, because then say to assume that uh, you know, they didn't got some work together. They have one time. I think um, experience is gonna play a lot in that fight. Early, early predictions. Obviously, we ain't seen Loma since uh, Dev the Devin fight. Didn't look like the old man that people think that. Yeah, see how he looks, but, uh, yeah, you know, I think that uh, people were expecting a different fight. A different Loma. Maybe it's a Loma that they saw with Jermaine. Uh, I'm sure people also thought that Devin was only going to throw his jab in that fight. Look, we got to see how he's looking. I think he's going to, again, look sensational. Against George, uh, I think right now him and Williams are fifty fifty fight though. It's still a fifty fifty, yeah. He's a big guy. My thoughts. He's strong guy. What a what a with a tank. Super tank, yeah. Super tank. Um, so a fight that you know he actually wants. To fight Shakur more than he wants to fight Loma. What do you think about that fight? I don't think uh, that's true. I mean, those his words. You don't believe that he believes that? Um, why would you want to fight Shakur more? The one well, wouldn't the bag be wouldn't the bag be more? Uh, versus versus Loma, I'm pretty sure it would be. I th- yeah, yeah, I think versus Loma, he'd get paid more. That's what I'm saying. So that would Loma, be the that would like, be the reason. Like, like I, I think I think he has a better chance at beating uh, Loma than he does Shakur. I agree. So you know what I'm saying? It's like you make more money with Loma. I think it's an easier fight with Loma. Uh, you make more money with Loma if you beat Loma. Cause then you get the Shakur fight. the The Shakur fight, the the Shakur bag got to be bigger than the than the um the Loma bag. It has to be. But but how? Why wouldn't it? I, I'm pretty sure in a, in America, um, Shakur is more of a notable name than Lomachenko. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm just I just don't think that the opponent is gonna make more like fighting Shakur than Loma. Bro, like the thing with Loma isn't that he's known or isn't that he's like this American star. It's that the fucking networks and the sponsors love him. Mm-hmm. They're paying the money for him. So, you know, uh, he had a big part in, in, in all of that. And I think that's why they fuck with him. I mean, if he were to do Loma, that's Shakur, then obviously, yeah. But if he were to pick between the two, I think the bigger bag would be Loma. Without winning? Yeah, I'm saying like like coming into the fight as an opponent with either guy, I think uh, he makes more with Loma. What you think, Chip? You, you think Williams to pay that? You think Williams to pay that makes more? What's up, Troy? Um, would you, uh, who are we talking about, like, Loma fighting, uh, William Zepeda? William Zepeda fighting Loma, would he get a bigger bag fight in Loma, or would he get a bigger bag fight in Shakur? It's a, it's his title fight, it's his first title fight, right? World title we're fight? talking about Shakur fighting Loma or William Zepeda. And keep in mind, keep in mind that in this scenario, he would be fighting Lomachenko for the unified 
titles. I'm gonna have to really say Which is a better business move. It is a better business move. And and it really depends on if I, I I'm gonna give you my honest answer. It depends on if Oscar De La Hoya is willing to trump the inside house because Shakur's with top rank, if I'm not mistaken, Loma's with top rank. That in house money they can get paid the most. Unless Oscar is willing to give Shakur more money than Bob is willing to give Shakur for the Loma, for you know, for him fighting Loma in house, then I could see it happening. But unless uh, Oscar is willing to like trump in house bread and the titles, that that's the only thing. It's, the like I don't think he's gonna go for a purse bid for Oscar. No, that's what I'm saying. So. I, Logically speaking, I would say Loma is probably going to be worth the most money and get you get money and belts. And with belts, you can acquire more attention. Of course, this is the future right here. King Garcia, y'all better be on the lookout. Trying to throw this here. He's going to be one of them ones. I'm telling y'all, man. I'm telling y'all, I got him working in spawn pros, working with the champs. So be on the lookout. Out of Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, I met, I met him with, with Mickey one time. Mickey was working with him, right? Mickey Bay? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Ohio State. Right. So, yeah, I guess I guess we will be seeing that that route go. So now, now let's talk about the Williams Cepeda and Shakur fight. I mean, where did they put that fight at? I think Panda was saying they should do it in Texas. Yeah, I was going to say Texas or LA or something like that. Texas would make more sense to with the taxes or no taxes. And then obviously, uh, Shakur having to relocate to Houston. He's been out there for a few years. Trains out of James Jones been down there. Um, I feel like they've adapted him out there. It's almost like a second home for him. So I think Houston makes the most sense. Keep going. This is my, this is my guy, Bobby. He's an undefeated fighter from the area. What's up, Bobby? What's going on? What's going on? What's up with Bob? What weight you be at, bud? What's up? What's up? What weight you be fighting at? Light heavy. Okay, okay, bud. How many? What's your record? Seven and zero. Hey, nothing but respect, bro. You getting in there every day on any level is respect. So, I mean, me and Danny, we've been brushing up on some topics. You guys could also join in. Um. Right now we on the Shakur and Cepeda fight. Where should we where should we put it? Where should it be held? And the stylistic matchup itself. Bro, so I, 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 go ahead. I think I think it's a it's a one sided fight. One sided ass whooping? One sided fight. I mean Shakur don't get the respect he deserves because he hasn't really fought any of the top guys yet, so he ain't got any chance to really prove what level he's on like that. We we only really go by we only really go by his amateur his amateurs and uh and uh, and what how uh, and, and what we see from what he got. Okay. Okay. Troy, what you got? Um I think it's a, a twelve round decision. A good a tough fight but a unanimous decision. In a tough fight, because you can still have a unanimous decision and still be in a tough fight dealing with somebody, even though it could be 10 9 with a guy could have been pressuring you. Bobby, your window. Uh, on top of that, uh, your window, I think. I, you have your window down? No, no, no. Oh, my bad. Um, I think it, it, it could take place in Texas. That would be a good one because he's already in Texas. Uh, I'm, if, 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 if uh of course speak Spanish, that would even be better. Um it, Texas is still in the United States of America, which is Republic. So like you like my man Ring said, the taxes. Um I would like to make a statement. Logically, I would say Shakur should fight Loma first, and the Zapata fight would be worth more money. Right. Because the Peta is up and coming. <laughs> After he I think that Loma and beat Loma, he did crazy papers of Peta. With that style and his matchup, 
then uh, Puerto Rican black, and then fighting Zapata in Me- in Little Mexico, which is right there on the border of Houston, and all of that. He could get paid the bread for that fight. It's it's an appealing fight. I think it makes the most business sense for uh, top ranking Bob Arum to match them up first, anyway. So I think that's what we would probably see uh, end of this year. Okay, keep it in house. Winner of that go to, go over there. Yeah, that's what makes the most sense. You as me, I mean, uh, that's what I would expect. Deli. you know, uh, Shakur's gonna get back in the ring this summer to defend his title. <laughs> Uh, from the names I've heard, it ain't going to be no pay-per-view fight. So I think we'll see him get in there. I think he'll look great. And then I think it'll be a big one in the uh, wintertime. Mm. Mm. I like it. I like it. Ryu and De La Santos rematch. They saying it's on that card with uh, Javante Tank Davis. Yeah, I've heard that. I, I, like, I like the value. I like the adjustments he can make in rematches. And uh, he well, he has shown in rematches, and I think that uh, he's he's shown improvement. I like Ryo on that one. Mm. Uh, I, like Ryo I think you I think you could win some money on that then, right? I think is he yeah. going to be the favorite? I don't think he'd be the favorite. I haven't looked at the lines, man. Uh, how do you get How do you get knocked out and be the favorite by the I by this that, guy? I think I think that we got to consider the time as far as it's not like it was back to back fights. Both fighters have done uh, things since, and I think that boxing being a lot of, of what you've done for me lately, Ryan just looked better lately. Okay, that performance yeah, is better. I think Ryan right now is is on that is on that uh is on fire right now because he got a lot of confidence behind him. I feel I feel like I feel like he he's really feeling himself right now. Mm. Troy, what you think? Man, listen. I'm going to say this because I haven't seen the fight, but I heard somebody said he got put to bed. Now, listen, Manny Pacquiao is still Manny Pacquiao, even though we know Mark Kennedy. So you didn't you didn't see the fight? You didn't see the fight? I didn't see the fight, but I'm hearing y'all say he got knocked out, and I want to compare it to Pandora getting knocked out last and getting a good fight. That's a, that's a good comparison, actually. No, it's not, though. It's not, though, because Pandora ain't caught since. That's my point. You, if he took a year off due to commission saying he got knocked out like that, and then uh, Mendoza loses, it puts cousin Mendoza loses against him. It kind of puts Pandora back in position because he was the last person to fight Mendoza and then Cuz lost to him. So on the just because he been knocked out last year is really not a thing in boxing because it can happen. Like, that's just a regular thing. Like, and then he's not taking a fight within three months' notice or anything like that. So, and, and, and at one point, real quick, Don King, a while ago, had a card, bro, with just full of rematches. It was called, like, a rematch. Card. Shout out to De Los Santos. He's on the live right now. Man, De La, yeah, shout out to De Los Santos. Listen, if you do it twice, then it's a wrap. You see what I'm saying? But he should... A rematch off of a knockout is worthy, and a person who got knocked out off of a year layoff, and he's about to fight on the undercard moving up, that's a worthy thing because it happened so long ago, bro. And everybody was, fun. as we heard, Fondora could have was winning the whole fight before he got knocked out, they said. Right. You see what I'm saying? So if that gives you an idea of what can be done in the future. I yield. Mm. No, but you didn't say. Yeah, I mean, now, now, who who would you favor in that fight? Is it Ryo or is that is it Edwin? I would favor the man who made the better adjustments in the second fight, depending on their stylistic matchup. How does Edwin fight? Also, you haven't seen Edwin fight. I haven't seen him fight because they kind of young, and I really watch a lot of old school boxing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but once I watch Damn, him, bro, Ted, you ain't watched the corner last fight? No, but I heard he was moving because he had a hurt hand, so, like, I can only imagine because I've seen how Dre fought. Um, I've seen how Dre Ward fought. No. Uh, with Cubs, Frosh, when he broke his hand. So that it causes mm-hmm. you an ugly fight, but you have to get the win. And I've seen Floyd fight with broken hands. 
You know what no, I mean? No, I ain't talking about the way the fight played out. Just you, the fight itself, because you said you ain't never seen him. Oh, no. Right. I I, no, I ain't even... I watched the old. That reminds me. He come forward to me. He yeah. was on Shakur's behind. You talking about Shakur and De Los Santos or the Edwin? Yeah, yeah, De Los Santos. Oh, yeah, well, then, yeah, he's going to have a tough fight. He's a natural boxer with a hurt hand, so he can't... So, I, that pressure... So, I'm going to watch the fight between Edwin and, and see and watch the fight, and then I'll come back and get with y'all with that. Because I, I got to watch it first. I ain't going to give nothing, no facts, uh, due to how they fight without watching them. I tell, you, I tell you what, both, both guys got an opportunity to win, no doubt. I think I think Edwin built up a lot of confidence having the performance that he had with Shakur. And I'm pretty sure he got a lot of people in his ear talking about Shakur was uh, fighting a certain way, was fighting scared because, uh, you know, you you that guy and stuff like that. But uh, I think, I think like I said, Ryu's hot right now. And he and he's not going to give it up by somebody who got knocked out already. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, but then you still got that mentality, knowing that yo, listen, this dude got that. This guy put me to like sleepy time for a little bit too. You always have that in your mind. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we also have to take into consideration that the guy was preparing for somebody totally different. It was a it was a last minute replacement. Um, I not, and I'm not not to take away, but like these things do have to be considered, bro. You know, it was a, a game plan for somebody totally else. Big facts, big facts. Yo, if Boo Boo, yo, bro, if Boo Boo and David Morrell are on that card, bro, which I heard that's a rumor, but even I if heard about that too, that's a bad move for Morrell. That's a bad move for Morrell. This is you're the second person that said that to me today. Um, that's a bad move for Morrell. They, if they trying to build up Morrell like they've been trying to, they got to stay away from Boo Boo. But Boo Boo's not a real hundred and sixty eight pounder. Don't matter. Boo Boo got phenomenal skills. Phenomenal skills. Yeah, he got. He was in a uh, a tough fight with Benavidez, and Benavidez is that level. Benavidez is, uh, you know, Canelo level style fighter. But Boo Boo can fight. Boo Boo has been undefeated all the way until Benavidez, and you know Benavidez is the monster. And I think if they run it back two or three more times, uh, Boo Boo gonna catch him once. But Boo Boo, you know, that was Boo Boo. What you mean? What, what you mean by that? What if if Boo Boo was to fight Benavides? Uh, three, Boo Boo at least gonna win one. Damn, oh, you, you like, got. All right, but I thought you said catch him like. La, oh, you, you mean? Nah, nah, come out. Yeah. <laughs> you mean catch a win, catch a dub, catch a dub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course, bro. You know how many bad referees and, and judges we got in this sport. Give me three, four fights with Benavidez. I might catch me a week. <laughs> nah, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. She's like, put it hey, in I'm Chicago. Santos, John. Listen, fight hey, with a hey, man. we do crazy numbers in Chicago. Crazy numbers in Chicago. What? I can't hear you, right. Troy. Um, I'm looking at De Los Santos and um Shakur. He's a pure boxer too, bro. Exactly. It looks like he got a little bit of pop. Like No, he got a lot of it. Listen, <laughs> if I get somebody like that with a hurt hand, bro, you get all the respect because this nigga sharp, bro. He ain't no joke in the ring, bro. Like all I gotta do is I only watch a minute and fifty two of the highlights. Once I see how you hold your hand, once I see if you fainting, I box. So you you know it's kinda easy when you see it. Like, dude got work. Like, if you fighting him on a broke hand and you win, all power to you. Mm. And I would like to see a rematch without no without no injuries. Yeah, I hear you on that. I hear you. I think everybody wants to see a, a, that that uh, rematch. Now, what you think, Ring Walk, Morel, Boo Boo? You know what I mean? Not three times. Not 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 fight him three times, but fight him one time. Uh, I think it's an interesting fight, man. I'm not the most sold on Morel. As a 
guy who's been in the gym with him, observed him in camp. Shout out to Ronnie Shields. Uh, interesting fight. 50-50 fight for me. 50-50 fight. You've been in the gym with a man. That, that just speaks volumes, bro. Because you, you know, you got to that's the part where it'd be hard to take away a man's knowledge on that because he actually seen him in practice, bro. That means a lot. And yeah, that's me good. That's me good for man. Yo, and I say this a lot. You know, to me, I take, especially at the top level, when you talk to big guys, what you do in the gym matters more to me than what you do on fight night. And I think that a lot of times, and most of the time, it's a reflection of how you look on fight night. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got you got to look you got you can't look bad. You can have some bad days at the gym. But you got to have a lot of good days. You know? Uh there's that, but I think it's also the quality of work that you put in the gym. You sure. get what I'm saying? So it's like what you're talking about is how you look and sparring. Cool. But when you're not sparring, it's what type of quality of work is you putting in? Because that's what separates these guys. Man, that is a fact, my nigga. Golly. Talk your shit. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I will, the, the, the champs, the champs, I look at how you shadow box and how you jump rope way more than you doing pads or back, uh, back rope. Listen, bro. You are talking so many facts right now. Because every old school fighter I watch, all they did was bag work. They didn't have mitts back then like that. Emmanuel Stewart is one of the first people to bring mitt work about. So they all they did back in the day was roll work, bag work, skip the rope, all the reflex bags, punching and all of that in the gym, and then calisthenics. So, like, all that extra, that's what I'm concerned with when I be watching these guys. And I've, I done been in the gym with some of these guys. I done sparred some of them. I done seen Floyd train in person, Dre Ward train in person. It's, and now I've seen Amir Khan. I've seen Andre Berto. I've seen a lot of guys train in person, bro. They don't take it serious as Floyd and Dre. And that's just the bottom line. I also seen some people that could jump rope the shit out of that and can't fight for shit, too. Listen, I've I seen a lot of guys in the gym do a lot of good things. And even spark good. You know, they hit the bag good. They look good on the on the bench, on the rope. But, but when that bell rings? That are uh, phenomenal in the gym. But when, like what Mayweather say, when the lights are bright, you can't be having no bad days. And sometimes these guys are phenomenal all around the board when it comes to sparring and when it comes to the gym, when it comes to the pad work and the jump rope. But when the lights are on, the pressure gets on. And, and sometimes people cannot control their jitters when they're in the ring and they got the spotlight on them and they say, okay, all that time that you was thinking about that fight, all the time that you was thinking about um, winning the fight, how you wanted the fight to go, you need to be able to control that and perform that on fight night when it's actually there, when the moment comes. And uh, a lot of these fighters, they just don't seize the moment. I agree. I think you get to see a lot of that in the gym, though. I think a lot of that comes down to like mental warfare, uh, and 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 where uh, a fighter's state of mind is at, you know, when 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 you and and to say no, not nah, because I'm sure, I know everybody's well seasoned and traveled, but like when you in Vegas, it ain't really work. You feel me? Everybody's trying to get you know earn a spot and earn that respect and and get a little bit of clout and uh, and. Uh, like, I'm seeing Tim Zeus for a top guys, Brian Mendoza for a top guys. I'm seeing Devin and Shakur for a top guys and guys in common and how they look with those guys and what they do and don't do with those guys. So it's like, yo, that shit really, like for me, from a guy who's never boxed, I'm paying attention. Now. I'm seeing how guys carry themselves. And to me, it's like, I think thus far, at least, I've been able to get a good idea on, on, on a lot of these guys, bro, because a lot of these guys are showing this in. You're mentally weak. And, 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 and it's like, you know, I talk to people in the sport, and they sold. They sold on this guy, and I'm like, bro, that man getting caught up over a piece of ass. He going to decisions. You know what I'm saying? It's things like that. I'm like, even carry yourself with women. It's things like that. The guys that's the guys that's 
three and zero, bringing girls to the gym to look good in front of, and in reality, you only bringing them on pad days because you know what's up on Friday. Like you know, just little things like that. You know, paying attention, seeing how guys carry and conduct themselves, and again, bro, like. Most of these dudes, they shadow boxing to look cute. This at the third, like you said, they jump rope to look good, you know. But it's like, how you really working? What you really doing? Put your phones away. Put put the cameras up. What, what's really happening in the gym? Poor Derek James, man. That <laughs> Ryan's Ryan's phone's been on the whole time. Hey, hey man, that that man is everything but poor. Cool. Hell yeah. He's taking them checks. You, you guys think Ryan Garcia should... All right, let's, let me say this. Let me say this. Let's say when Devin Haney beat Ryan Garcia. They're going to be talking shit saying that Devin Haney didn't really beat Ryan Garcia because Ryan Garcia is out here doing crack. Hmm. I mean, I think... I think, think? I think... I think I think this is what's going to be said. I believe because you know he's spazzing out like we've never seen him spaz before, going live every day, talking trash every day. He, he talks, he's like talking that. out of his ass, and I know it's to sell the fight. Well, I think I hope it's to sell the fight. I hope he's not that that stupid and crazy. If not, he needs to have a team on his ass and say, "Hey, yo, put the phone away." Like Boss was just saying, "Put the phone away. We yeah. going to war. This is your this is your life. This is Devin Haney. It's the top guy." Yeah. And you out here talking for gays. The only he, thing is the top guy ain't punching. And him. look, he's but he's like, like, like Ringwalk said, he's getting paid good, so maybe he got paid to do this hey, shit like that. Hey, <laughs> hey, I wish, I wish the bookies felt like you, Troy. I wish the bookies felt like you because when the lines dropped, I'm like, damn, that's it. I wanted plus five hundred Haney for knockout. So, so I'm I'm hoping that I'm hoping that more people feel like you because, sheesh, man, I just knew this was the fight. You know, I, like I knew this was a fight where it's like, you know, the Conor McGregor video, like, baby, we done it. Break out the red panties. I thought this was it. I'm like, yo, I'm hitting the sports book so nasty. I'm gonna do it so dirty. But the lines have moved a lot. Look, I think Ryan's training. I think he's training his ass off. But I think that uh, what you do outside of the gym matters, even out of camp, uh, even more so in camp. You get what I'm saying? So I've been on this live with you guys, and, you know, a few times I didn't reach down and I grabbed my vape and I hit it. I ain't no boxer. But when I see a boxer do that, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Really? Look, bro, I ain't mad at the man for having a glass of red wine with your dinner. I hope it I, I hope it was a good year. You know, I hope I hope you good I hope you got a good year of you know, I hope they had good grapes that year, so it's a good wine. Mm. Yeah, like LeBron LeBron does it. LeBron does it. LeBron does it elegant, bro. Pour yourself, first of all, who drink wine out the bottle, bro? But the but there was no wine inside the bottle. It was nothing. It was empty. Bro, we might do that with the tequila. We might do that with the honey back in the day. But, bro, you doing it with the wine? Bro, come on. Get you a glass. Pour your wine. Bro, do that. Look, man, I'm not here to bash the man. Because, believe me, he has given he has given us the reasons and the proof to do it. But, uh, I think a lot of it is show. I hope not all of it show. Because he has... Took it to a level where it's like, this ain't promoting no more. You get what I'm saying? Some of the things right, you have right, said, right. Uh, very serious, very egregious, uh, nothing to joke about. So I hope that there is some truth, and I believe there is some truth to what he has said. But uh, I think that he has hurt himself and hurt the fight with uh, a lot of his antics. Um, I think that when it's right. all said and done, the morning of April 21st, the they're going to, like, people are going to say, I knew Devin was going to win. I just didn't think it would be like that. And then they will proceed. Smash that like button, ladies and gentlemen. You went pause. What were you saying? Man, it's just hard. To, it's hard for me. It's not hard for me, but understanding and watching an amateur fight, it's just a hard fight for Devin, period. Because we don't have 
have on amateur gloves anymore. You see mm. what I'm saying? And due to the height of Ryan, the height of Devin, as a as a traditional boxer, the tall, the shorter man is, comes forward. So how is he gonna get in range without getting smoked? Because you see him and Derek is working on working on catching counters, and you don't get even good That's at great. doing that unless you're putting in the work. In sparring, yeah, you ha- you can't. And he's showing through sparring. And the only thing I don't like about his yes. sparring is he don't know how to keep his range. Like he's he's so look, over pursuing on punches. And his follow throughs, his follow throughs is bad too. Look. I don't know about sparring because at the end of the day, people going to post what they want to post. The video of a good funny too. So, um, if if people think that Devin can't fight on the inside and that that's going to be the problem in eights, the DM ring well, Danny, you feel me? Because I know uh, sports betting isn't legal in all, in all 50 states, but it's legal right here to me. And to Mill City, and uh, I think that that's what people are going to be shocked at. He didn't have to. He didn't have to do it with Regis. But what, uh, despite despite the mental uh, the mental uh, the mentality of Ryan Garcia and everything he's doing with or whatever, despite all this like craziness that he's doing, I would still be surprised if Devin Haney uh, ends up stopping. I'm expecting Devin to win. But to, to knock out uh, Ryan Garcia, I would still I would still give him the the knock. Like, I, okay, I would too because I would have to do a lot of push ups. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, that man was not in no pocket with reaches. That would that would be the the dumbest fight. No, nah, but I seen in the fight between him and Regis, he had an opportunity to take him out. And he kind of got the, you know, I've seen that kind of trend nowadays ever, ever since the Mayweather era where you see a guy hurt and you tend to think more safe and smart than than tend to think with a killer instinct. I've seen a lot of guys, I see that a lot nowadays. You, with you, you know the reason that is? is because you would rather just get the undisputed win than to take a stupid chance at doing something that the fighter is good at because Regis can punch in short range. He's a shorter fighter. So the moment Devin doesn't do what he's supposed to do in a fight, he doesn't look like Devin. And that's boxing feet work ability. And that's what I'm saying. When it comes speed for speed, Ryan and them, they both got speed. I would say Ryan's a little quicker. Then I would say power. I would say Ryan has more one-punch power resistance. And he has length. Devin is not a fighter that's going to be walking, coming on the inside, catching punches, using, and staying in there. If Ryan decides to jab and move backwards at any time in the fight, it'll put Devin Haney at a detriment in the fight because now he's going to have to come forward. Yeah. Well, this now, is- this guy right here is the reason why I'll be doing them damn push-ups right there, Zab. <laughs> so, uh, I, that's true where you say we never seen, well, I don't towards anybody like that. I've, I've never seen that, but um, knowing that Devin Haney got the experience that he has with the top guys that he has fought with Omachenko as well, and knowing that Devin Haney, I am a huge fan. I've always liked Devin Haney. The fact that his IQ is very, very good. He is very responsible fighter. He's a very responsible fighter. And that's what, that's the only reason why he's up there with the other guys. Because he's not the fastest He's not the quickest, and he's not the strongest. But his IQ is always there. Shout out to my guy Tiger Johnson on the live as well. Salute to you, man. Shout out to my man Tiger Johnson, Cleveland, Ohio, training with my nigga Prentice Brewer. <laughs> Shout out to my man Tiger, the best. Tiger, really the, Tiger the, the best at that as well. So if we want to talk about the 140 division, Tiger is on his way. And so I don't see anyone beating Tiger at 140. Due to the IQ, his trainer, Olympic pedigree, and size. Mm. And that's just why he's being honest. He's he's, he's beating Haney? He's beating Haney. He beat everybody at 140, bro. He got size. He can punch. He Tiger Johnson. Yeah. And Tiger Haney right now, no. Right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now? You know why I'm saying this? 
because if Tiger's taller than Haney, Prentice is going to tell him to fight off the back foot and make him come forward. And, and that's going to no put Haney at his head. There's no disrespect to Tiger. The boy can fight. Blue chip prospect for sure. Right now, he used to be in the city. Haney way too high, and I and I don't think. I mean, I think everything is a factor. When if Tiger was to ever Stop fight, it with the Haney I mean, talk, my fight, guy. Devin. Zab Judas says, Devin. "Stop it with the Haney talk, my guy." I know Tiger, Tiger got a lot of skills. Claymore Rain in the building. Claymore Rain in the building. What you think? You think Tiger Johnson can beat Devin Haney right now? Right now? I think it's a good fight. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. I'm high on Tiger. But right now. I'm I don't know, man. I think Devin's got a, got this momentum going. I think, you know what I mean, that activity, I just think he got the momentum. I, I feel like um, Devin is just now hitting his second win in the game. I think he's evolving. I think he's adjusting. I think I think we haven't seen the best of Devin Haney at 140. I think we I, sometimes when I hear people talk about Devin Haney, they talk about him like he's capped out. Like, we know what he does already. We know what he's going to do already. And I don't know if that's the case. I think he, I think he's going to be tapping into that bag. I think he's getting better. I think he knows what you guys know. I think he knows what, my, what, 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 what the king right here talking about. I think he understands the adjustments he has to make. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm confident that he's adjusting. He's getting stronger. He's adjusting to, to come forward if he has to. I think he's ready to, to stop Devin, um, to stop Ryan Garcia in this fight. I think he's he's ready to do that. But you know, Tom will tell the story better than any of us can tell the story. You know what I mean? When we see it, that's when we, when we can believe it, right? And salute that's to my guy Tiger. He actually fought, you know, uh, Ryan Garcia in the amateurs. For sure, for sure, for sure, man. I believe in that. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen that, so so we got to see it. And I think that's what makes this fight interesting and what's going to be exciting to watch is to see if he can do that. Is he going to do that? Because I think he, 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 he very well may have to do that. Mm. So let's see what happens. Mm. That's, what, that's all. Listen, when I'm talking, I'm talking about the possibility as me being a coach with the attributes of the fighter because in my eyes, I'm like, I was coaching him. I'll make the fight difficult for six, seven rounds, making him fight coming forward, running in the shot, and then I will come forward after that when he's down, dialed down. And I'm not saying that Haney can't fight on the inside. But guys, before I let me stop you because uh, we're tuning into like one minute where the live stops, so I will reboot it. And just to give you guys the heads up, we'll be talking to David Benavides, his father and trainer. And 40 minutes as well. So tap in. Uh, we'll get his thoughts on what he believes in that Jaime Munguia press conference and that $200 million. What was that all about? What was that? Before that minute come, I'm going to tell you what it was about. It's about bond money. And when you learn that you got it on file, you're trying to liquidate that. Shout out to Al Rod, Newark, New Jersey with the traveling boxing. That's my man. <laughs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to the channel. It's your boy Mills. Listen, 
hit that like button, like button, ladies and gentlemen. Hit that like button, and then look at my guy, Elijah Garcia. Elijah Garcia is not just sparring. He sparred Devin Haney. He's sparring Ryan Garcia and Tank. I'm going to show you all the pictures. But i just been noticing lately he's getting that sparring. Got that sparring with Ryan. And then where's that picture? Here's, here's the picture with Tank. And I know he just recently sparred Haney as well. And this is interesting. In one camp, he sparred Haney and Ryan Garcia. Oh, shoot. Here's Subban Matias. He sent me a, uh, a video. Y eso, jefe. Hablando ahí con el panda. ¿Qué tal esa entrevista? Cuéntame. ¿Cuándo entrevista a Michael o el papá? Para reírnos rato. <laughs> yeah, uh, Subban Matias is talking about the interview that uh, I did with Panda and stuff like that. We're going to start up another live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Okay. Call-ins are now available. Call-ins are now available. We have three lines open, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Mill City Boxing on YouTube. Okay. Phone lines are now open. We got 200 people on the YouTube right now. Make sure you guys smash the like button to improve the visibility of the show. And we are also live on Instagram for the call-ins. We got Claire Moraine coming in. Uh, phone lines are now open, ladies and gentlemen. So tap on in. Tap on in. Geeky Boxing, what it do, what it do. Right. So, we on. I just had to show um, Subir Matias left me a voice message and stuff like that. So, I was trying to share it with all the people. Just talking about the interview we did with Panda and stuff like that. You know, you know, we get the exclusives over here. And we also got an exclusive while Ringwalk was in the top ranked gym. Um, Blair Cobbs and uh, Adrian Broner, it's official. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, Yeah. So you heard it here first, Mill City Boxing. Listen, we heard it here first. Shout out to my my brother, Twin AD. He's from Cincinnati. Our birthday's on the same day, July 28th, in Rio. So I, I need to be the nigga to train AD. I'm sorry, blood. I got to train AD. He need a young nigga to train, an older young nigga to train him who can really move. Fuck all this old nigga shit. And I don't disrespect nobody, but... You need somebody to get real physical and 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 get in Adrian Broner's this. And the reason why nobody Adrian Broner not listening to nobody because Leos they know what you're talking about and they know if you know it. And they're not about to ride with you. They ain't gonna disrespect you. They gonna get out there and do their thing, but they're not gonna fully tap in. And mm. AB, if you listen to this, holla at Hamza so we can get this work, bro. Um, I actually, had, I actually had to tap in and ask you something from that Panda uh, interview. I know you're doing something, so let me know so I can ask you what you think. I really want Panda. To your opinion. I don't know if you're comfortable giving me your opinion on it, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. And you'll just let me know if you'll be like, "Get out of here, Claymore! You're starting shit with me, bro. I'm not answering that nonsense." Next question. <laughs> do me like, do me, do me like Trump, right? Uh, next question. You're done. You're done. Next question. You're done. <laughs> We're done with you. It's not your turn, sir. It's not your turn, sir. Shit, I've been arguing with your favorite boxer today, so. Okay, who? Who? Who's that? Let me think. Don't worry. He's one of your favorites. Word? Yeah, Word? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been going back and forth with him all day today. All right, all right. But um, talk, talk to me. To Shoot. something about Panda. About Shoot. Panda. Shoot. Well, how do you feel? And I, and, and I had to really put some thought into this, and it's been it's been on my mind. So, how do you feel about a trainer publicly saying he doesn't support his fighter or the fighter's promotion's choice, fighter's promoter's choice 
in the fight that he wants to do. Like publicly being like, I wouldn't do that. I want, and then not only saying that, but also going into the bag of Shakur Stevens is the greatest fighter in the world, the best fighter in the world. Like, how do you feel about that? How does how does Williams the Painter feel about that? We don't know. He's not here. But I'm just saying, you 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 being a box, you used to be a boxer, amateur boxer. You have a real mind for this. And then we got Hamza on here, who's also um, a, a former boxer and a trainer right now. Did he need to do that? Was that necessary? What was that all about? What, what what was that all about? Like, what did that what did that mean? How much? I don't want him to fight. I want him to fight. Of course, I want him to get the money. And of course, Stevens is the greatest fighter in the world. Of course, he's the greatest fighter. And, and he doesn't have no decision-making abilities in who to pay this fighting. So what was the use in? Would Calvin Ford come out and be like, yo, Devontae said you want to fight this dude, but I don't even want him to fight that dude. I want him to fight this other dude. And that dude who he's fighting is the greatest fighter in the world. Would he do that? I mean, Calvin has said that I wouldn't put, you know, um, you know Tank in that situation. You know what I mean? Um, because, and it's not, it's about, it's about the, the performance. It's about, you know, the ending, you know, they're, if they're trying to create somebody, right, a name, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to create it to a point that it's like, yo, he knocking everybody out. And they're great names. They're not, it's not like they're bums, they're trash kings. People want to just minute all the guys that are on their resume. Like I said, we're over here talking about, um, we're over here talking about Maxie Hughes over here, right? And like, look at his. There's a guy named William, uh, uh, Liam Walsh that Tank Davis beat that he lost to. You know what I'm saying? So it's like to be diminishing someone's like, do your homework, you know, f figure it out. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna look bad on the streets when you're talking crazy just because someone else says it, and you're just repeating what someone else is saying. And going off of what you're saying, as far as did he have to do it because he's not making any just uh. Uh, business decisions. I would have to say you're right. You you don't have to do that. You're right. But I know that like Panda and Shakur have a good relationship from the amateurs, you know, when they were in the Olympics. He was a, a USA trainer. So he's been watching this kid grow up. He got like a, a special bond with the kid, you know, and he knows that that style is hard to beat. And in this boxing world, bro, if you're not A side, B side, certain styles favor the A side. You know what I mean? And they're gonna go and have judges that favor that style. Right. And so, like so there. yeah, and that's why when people say, "Yo, if I seen the, if I seen the fight, if we run it back three different times with all different judges and this and that, we gonna get different outcomes." You really right that those things do happen. It's true, but um, that's just my case. I, I can hear you on that because. It's, it brought it blew out some steam already. Shakur has obviously retweeted, um, and, and you know I've talked to Shakur about the situation, and uh, yeah, that's just that's just about that, you know what I mean. But I don't think he should have said it. But that's how he feels, bro. He feels that probably nobody right. could touch. If if, if Shakur doesn't want to be touched, he won't be touched, and and he believes right. that too. That's how right, I, that's right, how I right. believe it. I thought it, I thought it was just. Just being that for the simple fact that Williams Zapata says he wants to fight. Like, I don't care. He's telling me he wants to fight. Y'all clearly have spoken about it. And he's like, bro, I want to fight. And then Oscar's like, yo, that's a fight. And you see the fight is potentially negotiation. Why well, come out on one of the best platforms in the city? You know what I'm saying? On the best platform where everybody's watching and, and publicly make it clear that that ain't got nothing to do with you because you don't want to move like that. That's what they trying to do. You it's like almost, and then and then giving accolades to Shakur the way you did. It's just like I don't know. I feel like maybe if I was losing the painter, I'd just be like, "Yo, bro, do you think we can do this or not? Are you going to be on board with this? Are you going to get get? You know what I mean? Are you going? Do you think we can do this or not? Like, because you just don't sound confident. You make it sound like 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 Shakur something like you make us as a team sound a little fearful of Shakur. You know what I'm trying to say? As a team, like representing us that way. Whereas I feel like if Calvin, if Tank would have told Calvin Ford that, that he wants to fight whoever he feels like fighting, Calvin's like, that's what we're preparing for, man. That's what this, that's Nah, what Tank wants. be like, what the hell you saying? <laughs> what you talking about? He's the greatest fighter in the world. I'm the greatest fighter. You know, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying that he should be saying William's the greatest, the best fighter in the world, but. I don't know. I just it, it after it, it was funny because you know he had lost connection. I don't know if you remember. He lost connection and said he was coming back and he didn't come back. 
because I really wanted to ask him some questions. Like, I started to, I, I kind of broke the ice with, yo, the, the layover, that in order for him to fight the winner of Lomachenko Cambos, and we all kind of, I think we're all probably leaning towards Lomachenko to win that fight. If Lomachenko wins that fight, A, how do you know if Lomachenko's going to pick you to fight? B, you know, are you willing to wait until October, November, um, late at the at the end of the year to let Williams and Payton sit there and not do nothing and wait that long to fight again? Or would you not want to jump on the opportunity that seems like right in front of you for July 6th? You know what I'm saying? Big showdown, Mexican guy against a black guy, you know, hopefully in Texas or in, you know what I'm saying? Or, or in Vegas, the big show, the big money that you possibly can get. And he, you know, he didn't really answer the question that, that, that clearly for me and then he got disconnected. But I thought it was kind of weird. That's all, you know what I mean? I just thought it was kind of weird. Like, why are you saying all this right now? What's the point of you saying you, you basically don't want to fight your core right now and your team does and your fighter, more importantly, does? That's why you seen me right away. I put that shit on members only when it was done. <laughs> I was like, I got to cut this up. I got to cut this up. What's going on, Katie? What's going on, Jay? Sir, hanging in. Nah, so y'all, you had, you had Oscar on or something, Lil? Oscar? Who you had on that, uh, that he's referring to? Oh, we were talking about a conversation he had with Panda the day before yesterday when Panda came oh, out okay, yeah, yeah. about Williams and Peta potentially fighting either Shakur or um, winner of Cambosis and um, and Lomachenko. All right, so I put this question in the chat, but I'm going to ask since I'm on. Who y'all think better, Zapata or De, De Los Santos? Um, better. Mm. How about threat? Who's a bigger threat? Who a bigger threat? Because they, they got two different games. I'm going with Zepeda. I'm going to go with Zepeda. Zepeda being the bigger threat. Yeah. Zepeda's the bigger threat? Yeah, he's yeah, got an engine that don't quit, man. That conditioning and that, that, that punch output, that's a that's a problem for anybody. I don't care who you are. You want to deal with that. But who has more better skills? I think. The Shakur that fought De Los Santos. You think he could be, that Shakur could beat Zepeda? Of course. That yes. exact, that exact Shakur. Yes. I I need I I need nah I I need I need him throwing I need him to throw that other hand more. I need because I know the kid's gonna keep coming, and he's not. De La, De La Santos put moments that he was like, oh that that counter jabs right there. I ain't trying to jump in, jump in, jump in. So this dude, he gonna actually just pull up. He's gonna, go for it. He's gonna take two to give you one. Take on that. So then, what does the painter have to do to beat the worst Shakur we ever see? Well, the, we, we got to acknowledge one thing. I don't think Shakur would take a fight if he if he's not official. Like I, you know what I'm saying? Because right. he just did that and look look at the type of performance. So I just feel like you be a hundred percent healthy. That's what I'm saying. For uh, saying. for this type of a caliber fighter. Because these guys got techniques to just be like, yo, I'm just going to put my head like this so every single time he does hit me, I'm going to mess up his hand. And then when his hand's messed up, I'm going to start throwing punches at his hand. I'm going to see how it reacts. And then I'm going to, oh, he's got this shit lost. These guys have different strategies of warfare. I remember Gladiator, yo. I remember Gladiator. White dude that you been gooding and they were doing the bare knuckle back there. And he put the head down and caught the head. Let me use the fight in the front of Mr. Gukun. Yo, I got to definitely get Jay up in here as well because he's been working with Shakur. Good work. Now, Shakur, his, uh, Shakur got to take a, a, a big fight in his, in terms of, like, we, like, the, pop, the public think that other fighter has a chance, and then he got to go out and stop it. Stop. For me to be convinced. And mm. who is that fighter? At 35 for him. William Zepeda. But he is Zepeda coach. Now, Zepeda coach don't make decisions, bro. He not back in his van, though. He, like, he in the gym with him. Hey, not he back in the gym with him, but he don't make decisions, bro. He did, but he didn't, he didn't, Panda did say that he believes in his fighter, but it. you guys kind of believe that the way he said it was more like, I got to say it because this is my teammate. 
Like I'm getting paid to say this shit right now. Is that what you guys are trying to say? He was pulling. He was. He was pulling Mr. Core on the question. Mm. Okay. Okay. Logically. Okay. Say to to stay out of it, you would choose neutral because you you want to protect your fighter at the end of the day. And, right. and listen, I've turned down some fights as a pro because. Especially when I was about to fight out here in, in the Bay.